Hi, it's the Reading Bug, here to tell you that today's episode is brought to you by our Reading Bug Box subscription. During these stay-at-home times, we want to make sure that you have the very best books and activities to keep kids engaged in learning, while also having fun. Every box is perfectly personalized by age, interest, and reading level. And you can subscribe right now at readingbugbox.com. We're also making available one-time care packages from our bookstore, available at thereadingbug.com slash care, and shipping anywhere in the U.S. Thanks for your support! Hello, reader! Welcome back to Reading Bug Adventures! This week, it's a bonus full-story episode of our race car adventure, a trip back in time to see racing great Danica Patrick go for the win in the 2008 Japan 300 Indy Car Race. Thanks for listening! Things might sound a little different in this episode, because like many of you, we're adjusting to some difficult changes all around. We're staying home to help keep ourselves and our friends healthy, so we're recording episodes from inside our house, rather than from a recording studio. Thanks to Zencaster, who has graciously lifted recording limits for everyone through June, so that podcasters like us can continue recording while staying healthy and safe. And thanks to Resonate Recordings, who mixes and masters all of our podcast episodes, and to our sponsors, and all of you, of course. To become a patron and support our work, visit patreon.com slash readingbugadventures. While our bookstore is temporarily closed, we are still shipping special orders and care packages with activities for stay-at-home kids ordered through our website at thereadingbug.com. And we're also shipping our Reading Bug Box subscription boxes ordered from readingbugbox.com. Okay, reader, are you ready to go on an exciting adventure with me and the Reading Bug? Then what are we waiting for? Let's fly! It's time for a Reading Bug Adventure. It's a Reading Bug Adventure. There's lots of fun in store. Just inside our book bag, there's new places to explore. Grab your crayons and paper and your imaginations too. The Reading Bug and I can't wait to share our trip with you. Reader, hi. It's so wonderful to see you again. I've really been looking forward to another exciting adventure together. Do you have any guesses where the Reading Bug's magic book bag will be taking us this time? I wonder what the Reading Bug has planned, or where the Reading Bug is, for that matter. Have you seen her? She told me to get in gear and meet her here, all ready to roll. (laughs) Whatever that means. But I don't see her. Do you? Check the skies. If she's running late, we should see her flying to meet us any second now. Reader, did you hear that? It didn't sound like the reading bug's flapping wings. But if it wasn't her, then who or what was that? It's not coming from the sky. Is it somewhere on the ground? But where? got the need for speed. Oh, look, reader. It is the reading bug. But she's not flying. She's running fast and right this way. Screech! Ooh-wee, what a ride. Oh, hi, Lauren. Hi, reader. You're here already? You beat me here? Hi, reading bug. Yes, of course. We got here a few minutes ago, and we were just waiting for you. A few minutes? Oh no! But I was sure I was going to beat you. Did you see how fast I was driving? Driving? Uh, Reading Bug, I hate to break it to you, but you don't have a car. You were just running. You were fast for sure, but I think you're actually quite a bit faster when you fly. (laughs) Oh yeah, you're right, Lauren. I was just pretending to drive a race car. Sometimes my imagination can really run wild, can't it? I've been reading so many great books about race cars and racers, but still, I really wanted to win. If I'm ever going to be a successful race car driver, I'm just going to need to figure out how to go even faster. Come on, let's get moving into the book bag so I can learn even more about how to be a great race car driver. (laughs) Whoa, slow down a little, reading bug. Part of the fun of reading is learning new things and letting your imagination carry you away. But what's the rush? We don't even know where we're adventuring yet. Oh yeah, you're right, Lauren. 
Why don't I tell you some of the books I brought with me in my book bag? And you can guess where we'll be going. Sure. But guess quickly. We really gotta go, go, go. I brought Race Car Rally by Alan Copeland, Becoming a Pro Auto Racer by Dean Miller, and Behind the Scenes Race Cars by Cody Crane. Books about race cars, of course. How exciting! So, are we going to see a car race today, Reading Bug? I've never been to a car race before. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. My magic book bag is going to take us all to a car race, but we'll need to decide on which kind. Which kind? You mean there's different kinds of car races? Oh yes, there are all kinds of car races. Different kinds of cars, different kinds of race tracks, different distances. The 24 Hours of Le Mans race is a race that lasts an entire 24 hours. There are stock car races with cars that look a lot like the cars you see driving around your house, or like the ones your parents have parked in their garage. Cars like Ford Fusions, Dodge Chargers, Chevrolet Impalas, and Toyota Camrys. But in stock car racing, these cars are custom built and have much bigger motors to make them faster than regular cars. There are also Formula One car races. Formula One or F1 cars. Look a lot more like what you might think a race car would look like. The cars have thin bodies and just one seat for the driver. The wheels of the cars stick out to the side, past the body of the car. There are also drag races with hot rods, truck races with monster trucks, go kart races, and many, many more. The variety of races and racers is part of what makes the sport so much fun to watch. That sounds thrilling. But it sounds like we can only see one race on our adventure today. So, what kind of race are we going to go to? Reader, what kind of race or race car do you want to see? It's a really tough decision, but I think I finally made up my mind. I'd like to see an Indy car race. Indy car? What is an Indy car? Indy cars are like Formula One cars. They look like a real race car. Are open wheel and see only one person, the race car driver behind the wheel. The IndyCar organization oversees racing contests that are held all over the world. The most famous is the Indy 500. Have you heard of that? Oh yeah, I've heard of the Indy 500. It happens every year, right? That's right. It's a 500 mile race that takes place every year in Indianapolis, Indiana, in the United States. So, are we going to the Indy 500 then, Reading Bug? Maybe that would be fun, but wait a second. Why are we taking so long? This is a race car adventure after all. We should be racing. I've got all these great books in my book bag. Books like "Go Girls Go" by Frances Gilbert, "Mama Lion Wins the Race" by John Muth, and "The Princess and the Pit Stop" by Tom Engelberger and Dan Santat. And I'm ready to put my pedal to the metal. Let's stop chatting and get going. Hmm. Those are all books about race car drivers who are girls, aren't they, Reading Bug? How exciting! Why don't we take a little more time to decide exactly when or where we want the book bag to take us, though? And we should definitely take a short pause to get our paper and crayons. Reader, did you remember to bring your paper and crayons? Just like the illustrations in our favorite books, pictures are how we can remember and retell the story of our adventures together. I'm sure there will be lots of amazing sights to capture in a car race. So if you need to, you can pause our adventure and get your crayons and paper now. Great. Okay then. Are you both ready now? Let's ready, set, go, and race to the racetrack. I've never been to a car race before, so this should be so much fun. I'm really excited to learn all about the cars and the drivers, and to maybe even meet a race car driver while we're there. I know you're eager to get going, Reading Bug, but one more thing before we go: How about a little stretch? Actually, that is a pretty good idea, Lauren. I read in Becoming a Pro Auto Racer by Dean Miller that some people think that race car drivers don't need to be athletes, but auto racers need lots and lots of strength and stamina to control the powerful cars they drive and to deal with the very hot temperatures that are common on race tracks. Sounds like we really need to stretch out our bodies and get ready for the races. Then, let's all stretch out together. Everybody, stand up. Unless you're buckled into your car, 
or tucked into your bed. And wiggle your fingers and toes like you're cheering on your favorite race car. Are you wiggling? Great! Now, stretch your arms up high over your head. Perfect! Stretch up high, touch the sky, crouch down low and wiggle your toes. Swing your arms from side to side, let's get ready to go. Stretch up high, touch the sky, crouch down low and wiggle your toes. Swing your arms from side to side, now we're ready to go. Great work, everyone. I feel like I've shifted into high gear. I'm all stretched out and ready to race. Me too. Reading bug, reader, let's rev up the magic book bag's engine, and our imaginations, of course, to get us started on our adventure. Let me hear you make sounds like a race car. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Start your engines and get ready to race around the world through time and space. Magic book bag, don't go slow. Put the pedal to the metal, and off we'll go. Reader, look, it's working. The magic book bag is getting bigger and bigger, big enough to fit us all inside. And there's pictures, words, and music swirling all around in there from all the books about race cars and racing that the reading bug has been reading. Can you see it? Look. There are enormous racetracks floating around in there. And circling around the tracks are all kinds of cars in all sorts of colors. Red, green, yellow, blue, purple, and orange. There are long skinny cars, wide cars that are close to the ground, small cars barely bigger than the driver, and cars that look like the ones that drive near our homes and schools. I see colorful racing trucks with giant monster wheels and lots of interesting new words like pit crew, grand marshal, aerodynamic, combustion, traction, and inertia. And there are flags of every color. Green ones and yellow, red, black, white, and even black and white checkered flags. That green flag means it's time for us to get started. Hurry, hurry, let's go. Hop three times with me, then into the book bag all together. We do not want to be late. Ready? One hop, two hops, Three hops and we're in! Let's jump inside our book bag. What will we find there? Imaginations run away. What's in our book bag? Our trusty book bag. What will we learn about today? Go, go, go! Whoa! Everybody hold on tight! We're going really, really fast! Reader, the book bag is racing quickly along the ground so fast that I can barely make out the trees and buildings that are zipping by us. I wonder where we'll end up. What kind of racetrack will we see today? And what kind of cars? Will we see any famous race car drivers? The reading bug was in such a hurry to leave, we didn't have time to figure out where or even when we'd be traveling to. Lauren, reader, look up ahead. It's a racetrack. It's an enormous egg-shaped track with cars zooming around and around. Oh no, the race has already started. I told you we needed to hurry up. Come on, book bag, hurry. The reading bug is right. The race has already started. I wonder how long ago. The track is enormous, and all around it are bleachers full of cheering people. Can you hear them cheer? And there are more people and trucks in the middle of the racetrack too, with the race cars circling around and around them. Some of those people are cheering too and others are watching the cars closely, dressed in colorful outfits with patches all over them. And they have helmets on their heads, too. They look like race car drivers, but they're not inside the cars that are racing. Who are they, and what are they doing? Reading bug, the book bag is about to land. Do you know where we are? What race is this? Reader, can you see what kind of cars are on the racing track? Buckle up, we're coming in fast. Let's hurry up and get to the race. Reading bug, I don't think we're heading for the bleachers. It looks like we might be headed right for the middle of the racetrack. Those big race cars are moving really, really fast, and if we land among them, we'll be squashed flat for sure. Everyone, watch out! 
We landed. And listen, reader, I can hear the cars racing by us. They're really close. But so far we seem to be okay. Let's hurry out of the book bag and make sure we're out of harm's way. Follow me! Let's go! Where are we, Reading Bug? Look, the race cars are whizzing past us, but we're on another road right next to the track, closer to the center. The cars are so loud, and we're so close. I can smell the rubber of the tires on the track. I don't feel very safe this close to those speeding race cars. We've got to get out of here, and quickly. Hey, hey, get out of the road. Are you crazy? How'd you get down here anyway? Look, Raider, someone is running this way and yelling. He's wearing a blue and black outfit that covers his arms and legs and zips up the middle. Tough black boots and a helmet on his head. It's hard to hear him over the sound of the cars and the roar of the crowd, but I think he wants us to move. Get out of here! You're in danger! Hey! Yeah, you! How did you get down here on Pit Road? Quickly! Follow me! We gotta get you out of here! Now! Reader, Reading Bug, I think we might be in real danger! Quickly, follow the man in the helmet! He's running back to the side of the road towards several other people who are all dressed in outfits just like his. Let's go! Faster! Faster! Run! What the heck were you thinking? Standing around in the middle of Pit Road? You could have gotten run over! What? I can hardly hear you over all the noise! Hold on! Jim, grab me two helmets. Here, put these helmets on for me. Reader, the man wants us to put on these white helmets. Here, grab one and put it on. Ready? Great. Okay, you two. Can you hear me now? Oh, yes, that's much better. Reader, these helmets must have radios inside them. Hello, I'm Lauren and this is... It doesn't matter who you are. Are you out of your minds? You could have gotten us all crushed out there. What were you thinking in all my years on pit crews for all kinds of races? I've never seen anyone stand in the middle of pit road like that. How'd you get down here from the bleachers anyway? I'm calling security. I've got to get back to work. No, no. Please don't send us away. We're fans here on a very special visit. Who was that speaking? Oh, that was the reading bug. She crawled up inside my helmet so she can hear and talk with you. I'm Lauren, and this is our reader friend. We didn't mean to pull you away from your work or to cause any trouble. And we certainly didn't mean to put ourselves in danger. The magic book bag brought us here, and the reading bug was in such a rush to get to the race. I'm afraid we didn't give much thought to where we were going or where we might land. Magic book bag? A talking ladybug? I've seen and heard a lot of crazy things on Pit Road before, but your story takes the cake. Pit Road? Well, that's right. My name is Kyle Moyer, and you're right smack in the middle of Pit Road. It's a very dangerous place to be while an IndyCar race like this one is in progress, unless you're a trained member of the pit crew, that is. Lauren, I read in Behind the Scenes Race Cars by Cody Crane that the pit crew is the team that a driver relies on during races to keep the race car running, since they often race for many hours and hundreds of miles. The pit crew replaces the car's tires if they need it, and they also make repairs to improve the car's performance, all in a matter of seconds, so the driver can get right back into the car. That's right, Bug. Our crew tries to keep even our longest stops to less than 15 seconds. There's no way a driver can win that race if their pit stops aren't clean and fast. So we play a very important role in every race. You're on the pit crew for one of the drivers? That's right. I'm Danica's crew engineer. Danica? As in Danica Patrick? Are you serious? Completely serious, yeah. Reading bug, who is Danica Patrick? Who is she? Lauren, she's only the most successful woman in the entire history of Formula One racing. Oh, wow! The most successful woman? I didn't even know there was a female racing league. You know, I love watching women's soccer. The U.S. women's national soccer team has won four World Cups and four Olympic gold medals. And the women of the WNBA, United States Women's Professional Basketball, are amazingly athletic and so much fun to watch compete. Is women's car racing like that? There is no women's IndyCar, Lauren. There's not? But... 
then how will we see women race car drivers? The bug is right. There is no women's IndyCar. There's just IndyCar. Everyone, men and women, competes together. Yeah, there aren't very many professional women race car drivers. But the amazing women racers throughout history have raced right alongside the men. I just read a book about Janet Guthrie, IndyCar Racing Pioneer, by Barbara Sheen. She says that the Indy 500, which is one of the oldest and most famous car races in the world, didn't let women drivers sit in the press box or work on a pit crew until 1971. Even the wives of the race car drivers weren't allowed on the pit road near the cars. Barbara Sheen says that many of the men involved with IndyCar racing, and even some members of the general public, thought that women were bad drivers who weren't physically or mentally strong enough to race cars. So women weren't allowed in the Indy 500 race until 1977. That's when Janet Guthrie became the first woman to compete. And what an inspiration she was. She placed eighth in 1978, proving that women could compete successfully against the male drivers. And now, racing is one of the only sports where men and women compete against one another. Less than 50 years ago, people thought women couldn't race cars? Really? Girls can do anything that boys can do, can't they, reader? I'm sure glad Janet Guthrie showed them that. Me too. She paved the way for racers like Danica. That's right. And Danica made history of her own. She is the only woman so far to ever win an IndyCar series race. Well, most of your history is correct, little bug. I can see you've been doing your reading. And you're right that Danica is amazing, talented, and successful. But I hate to tell you that she has not won an IndyCar race. No woman has. But that's why we're here, isn't it? I know she's going to get that win someday soon. Racing like she's been lately, Danica will get the checkered flag. Maybe even today. But, Kyle, Danica has won a... Wait. What year is it? Well, it's 2008, of course. It is? 2008? You're sure? Well, of course I'm sure. And where exactly are we? We're on the side of Pitt Road on the track of the IndyCar Japan 300. The Japan 300? What's the Japan 300? Lauren, it's the IndyCar race that Danica Patrick won in 2008. We're here at her winning race. Hey, Kyle, what are you doing out there? Come on back to the rest of the crew. We're all getting antsy about the race with the track conditions like they are. Who are you talking to over there anyway? That's my cue. I gotta get back to the rest of the team. Nice chatting with you. I'll have the security team get you safely off the track. Wait! Don't leave. I came to race today. I've got a need for speed. <laughs> race? <laughs> I'm afraid that's not going to happen. It takes years and years of training to drive one of these cars. Each of these Indy cars is worth hundreds of thousands and sometimes millions of dollars. But I like you. If you promise to stay out of the way, I'll let you join me and the crew. It's probably easier than getting you back to the stands anyway. This way. Follow me. Welcome back, Kyle. We've got a race to win here, in case you forgot. Danica's doing just fine without me. I'll see her when she comes into pit. I've got a good feeling about her today. Who are these two? A uh, new crew, of course. Isn't that right, Lauren? Uh, yeah. We're new crew members. That's right. All right, if you're going to stay, let's get you suited up. Here, take these fire suits like mine. You can slip the fire suit on over your shoes and then zip it right up the middle. Quickly now. Fire suit? They look kind of like the spacesuits that astronauts wear to me. Except spacesuits are usually white. Your suits are blue and black and covered in patches with company logos on them like Go Daddy, Honda, and Motorola. Ha! <laughs> well, you're not wrong when you say that our suits look like spacesuits. Ever since 1975, the International Automobile Federation has required that race car drivers' clothing be flame retardant in order to protect the driver in the event of a fire. That's why they're called fire suits. They used to be really heavy five-layer suits that were very similar to space suits, but now they're made out of a lighter material. The suits have to be able to withstand a temperature of 300 to 400 degrees Celsius, which is hotter than the oven in your kitchen. In 1994, the Federation mandated that pit crew members wear flame retardant suits too. We even wear fireproof underwear. Now hurry, get those suits on so we can keep you safe. Reader, let's quickly get into these fire suits, like Kyle said. Step in through the legs like this. 
Great. Now, pull up the fire suit and put your arms through. And now, zip it right up the middle. Great work. Is there anything else we need to put on? Yes. You're going to need fireproof gloves like the rest of the crew. Here you go. Thanks, Kyle. And you've already got your helmets on, which are really important, too. Not only do they keep the noise of the track out and allow us to talk through the radios inside, they also protect drivers and crew members against head and neck injuries. Reader, we look just like race car drivers. Did you say that the drivers wear helmets just like these, Kyle? Pretty similar, yeah. And do they have radios inside, too? Well, yeah, they do. But that means we can talk to Danica, doesn't it, Kyle? Can she, can she hear us right now? Hi, Danica. I'm a huge, huge fan. <laughs> she doesn't hear everything we're saying, little bug. She's got to focus on her race. We talk to her when we need to. But we try to limit our conversations with her to avoid distracting her. Danica needs to use all her senses to drive that performance vehicle. And she uses her ears to listen to the sound her car is making. They can provide her with important clues about the car's health. Hey, look! Here she comes! Car number seven, the blue and black car coming around the corner. Wow, that was really, really fast. She zipped by us in a blink of an eye. Yeah, these cars can fly. IndyCar race cars can go as fast as 230 miles per hour. But the average speed in a race is more like 160 miles per hour because drivers have to go slower around the corners of the track to avoid crashing. That's still a whole lot faster than your mom or dad drives, even on the freeway. And they just go around and around the track? Exactly. But they're constantly looking for opportunities to pass other drivers, watching out for dangerous crashes, and making decisions about when to refuel and make repairs. In addition to being very physically demanding, there's a lot of thinking, strategy, and risk-taking involved, too. I read that the Japan 300 track is one and a half miles around. So, if the total race is 300 miles, like the name says, that means the drivers need to make 200 laps around the track, right? Exactly right. And a lot can happen in 200 laps, believe me. So even though Danica's still pretty far off first place, she's got lots of time left. Come on, Danica, let's go! Hey, Kyle? Is that... Shh, yeah, Danica, what's up? How are you feeling out there? That lap looked fast. I don't know. I just can't seem to catch a break today. I'm driving as fast as I can, but I can't break out of the pack. I just don't think it's going to be my day. Castro Neves is having a clean race, and he was first in qualifying and in the pole position. And Kanan looks great, too. He was the fastest during practice, and his car's burning really strong for him. If I can't get around them, we're going to need to wait a little longer before we see a woman in the winner's circle. Hey, don't say that. 300 miles is a long race, and you've got plenty of time to turn it around. Remember, it's not just about going fastest, it's about driving smartest. Relax, take your time, and go, girl, go! Go, girl, go. That's pretty catchy. Go, girl, go! Line. It's time to take the lead and pick up speed. Break away from the pack to the end of the track. Go, girl, go! That was catchy. Kyle, who's the new singer on your pit crew? Oh, <laughs> my goodness. I didn't know you could hear me, Danica. I'm Lauren. I'm here today with the reading bug and our reader friend, watching you race and learning from Kyle today. I'm really sorry. I didn't know my microphone was on. I didn't mean to distract you. Not at all. Your song was just what I needed to get my head in the race. I'm coming into the pit now. See you in just a second. And you better make it snappy. Look, Danica's car is coming right toward us. Better stand back a little. We gotta get her in and out of the pit as quickly as possible. And only six of us are allowed over the wall to do things like change tires and refuel. It's a scheduled stop, so just a quick adjustment to the tire pressure and the top off on fuel should do it. Watch closely and I'll try to tell you what's happening. Wow! Lauren, don't get too close to the car. It's so hot you could toast a grilled cheese sandwich on the hood. I can feel the heat from here. 
Okay, team, go, go, go! Now watch, the man in the back is lifting the car so the tires can be replaced, and the four men kneeling by the tires are quickly replacing the old tires with new ones. Finally, the man with the hose at the middle of the car, just next to Danica, is refueling, so she's got enough gas for another 50 laps. Look, Lauren, reader, it's Danica Patrick, and she's waving at us. And just like that, we're done. Go, Danica, go, go! <laughs> Great work, everyone. Well, just under nine seconds. Wow, that sure was fast. How can you make sure the wheels stay on the car when you change them so quickly? Oh, that's a good question, and the answer is lots and lots of practice. <laughs> we practice these pit stops all the time, and my team works with athletic trainers when we're off-season so we can all stay in shape. If we get something wrong, the consequences for our car and the driver could be catastrophic. Oh, no! Watch out, Danica! Raider, did you see that? That car just spun into the wall, and Danica had to swerve to get out of the way! Kyle, did you see what happened? Yeah, Muto took a hard turn into the side rail coming out of the pit. I can't tell if it was a mechanical issue, but it looks like he's okay. That was a close one, but I'm still here. Good job keeping out of that mess. There's still a lot of race left. Wait for your moment, then get your win. Kyle, do you really still think she can win? She's all the way back in eighth place. Sure. And Helio Castroneves, who won this race last year, has been in first place for every one of the 56 laps so far. But that doesn't matter. What matters is who crosses the finish line at the end of the 200th lap. With a bit of patience and grit, Danica definitely still has a chance. I sure hope he's right, Lauren. This race and this win is a really important moment in racing history. Danica has to win. Kyle, why is Danica going so slow? Is something wrong? Nope, no problems. Just a yellow flag on the course, see? They wave that flag when there's a crash or other caution on the track, so more drivers aren't at risk. Once it's cleared, the race will start again, and Danica will resume her shot at making history. Wow, this is all so exciting, and dangerous too. While we wait for the yellow flag to clear, I think it might be a good time for us to pause our adventure. Pause? No, we still haven't been able to race a car, Lauren. I want to drive a race car and win a race. <laughs> Reading bug, don't be silly. You're much, much too small to drive one of these enormous cars. And besides, the cars are all already racing. We're not going to be able to drive a car, but if we're lucky and Danica is able to pull ahead of all the other drivers, we might be able to see the first woman to ever win an Indy car race. That would be a real thrill. I'm going to pause our adventure for a brief message about today's sponsor. Don't go anywhere. The Reading Bug and I will be right back in just one minute. Today's episode of Reading Bug Adventures is sponsored by Scholastic, the world's largest publisher and distributor of children's books, connecting educators and families through accessibility, engagement, and expertise. That's right. And today, we're featuring a new Scholastic title by New York Times bestselling author Cody Keplinger. Lila and Hadley. It's a wonderful book, and we're thrilled to recommend it to all of our listeners. It sure is. I've been reading so many diverse books lately, but don't you think children's books need more representation for kids who might be different or going through difficult changes? I sure do, Reading Bug. And Lila and Hadley does such a great job. In the book, Hadley is very angry about a lot of things. Her mom is going to jail, so she has to move in with her older sister, and they haven't spoken in five years. She's also had to leave her friends and school behind. And she's going blind. And Lila is an abandoned dog who spends her days quietly lying around at the local rescue. She doesn't listen to directions, play with other dogs, or show any interest in people. Until she meets Hadley. It's a wonderful story about discovering true friendship, finding home, and the possibilities of forgiveness. Lila and Hadley by New York Times bestselling author Cody Keplinger is recommended for ages 8 to 12. And you can get it at thereadingbug.com or your local independent bookstore. A big thank you to Scholastic for their support. Reader, you're back. It's so good to see you again. And the Reading Bug and I are really glad you've returned to finish our adventure together. We're at the Twin Ring Motegi Racetrack in Japan, watching the Japan 300, an indie car race. Not just any indie car race, Lauren. My magic book bag zipped us back to 2008, the year Danica Patrick becomes the first woman ever to win an IndyCar competition. No other woman has won since then. Yet. 
You're right, Reading Bug. It's a very special race to be a part of, for sure. But I'm not certain you've got your dates right. Could this really be the race that Danica Patrick wins? The race is 200 laps around the track, and Danica just completed lap 150. But she hasn't gotten much closer to the front of the race. She's in fifth place now, with only 50 laps to go. Some of the other cars have been ahead of her the entire time. Oh, and my voice probably sounds a little funny too, doesn't it, reader? That's because we're all wearing helmets with radios inside them that allow us to talk to each other over the loud noise of the race cars. We're here with our new friend Kyle, who's Danica's pit crew engineer, and the rest of Danica's pit crew, and we're helping keep Danica's car fueled and running fast, and giving her encouragement, of course. But I'm not sure she's going to be able to get in front of those other speedy cars. Here we go. Danica will be coming in the pit again in just a second. Everyone, get ready. I want to pack in the fuel this time. Top it off to the very top. Here she comes. Oh, and it looks like Carpenter and Helio are coming in for pit stops, too. They're trying the same strategy that we are. Oh, someone's going to end up running on fumes at the end of this race. I just hope it's not us. Go, go, go! Look, Reader, the four pit crew members are changing Danica's car's wheels again. And the man in the middle, right next to where Danica sits, is refueling the car with that big hose. Great work! Nice and fast. Great work, everyone. That's as full as that tank gets. Let's just hope it lasts long enough. Now she just needs to have a nice restart once the course caution is lifted. If Danica runs the rest of this race right, that will have been her last pit. Her last pit? That's right. She and I decided to make a hard run at first place today. We're going to fill her tank now and let her drive until she crosses the finish line. Other cars will need more fuel, which will slow them down and give her a few key seconds to get past them. But she'll need to use her fuel wisely. 50 laps is about as far as you can go on a full tank. If she doesn't conserve the gas in her tank, she'll sputter out before the race is finished. Sputter out? You mean she could run out of gas before she finishes? That's right. But Danica's a smart driver. She'll need just the right balance of speed, patience, and confidence to get herself in front of those other drivers. Kind of like the tortoise and the hare. Huh? The tortoise and the hare. It's a fable about a speedy hare and a slow and steady tortoise. Oh, yeah. It's kind of like that, isn't it, Reading Bug? The hare was the fastest animal in the forest, and he challenged anyone to try and beat him in a race. One day, a tortoise said that she would race him. Laughing, the hare told her there was no way she could beat him. The tortoise was too young, too slow, too small, and a girl to boot, after all. When a wise old owl warned the hare, pride comes before a fall. The hare laughed it off, and he agreed to race the tortoise. And when the owl waved the green flag to begin the race, the hare bounded off, leaping high into the sky. Right! Let me finish it. Before long, the hare had left the tortoise so far behind that all the tortoise could see were the soles of the hare's big feet far in front of him. Because the tortoise was so far behind, the hare ate a snack and decided to take a little nap. But while the hare was sleeping, the tortoise kept right on going, found her opportunity, and passed the hare, winning the race. Ha ha! Yeah, it is kind of like that. Our tortoise strategy. Danica will keep going even when the other cars are running out of gas. And when they least expect it, she'll pass them. I like it. You know, reading about race cars, I thought racing was all about going as fast as you can. But there's a lot more to it, isn't there? There sure is. Wow! We've got a really great view of the race here, right down next to the cars on Pit Road. But I wish there was something more we could do to help Danica take the lead. I wish I could be right there with her, driving the car. Reading Bug, those cars are going really, really fast. It's extremely dangerous to drive a car in a race like this. And the pit stops are less than 15 seconds, which is not nearly enough time to jump into a car. I think we're much better off cheering Danica from Pit Road. If you're right, we're about to witness history. Yeah, from the sidelines. Reading Bug, even if there's a way for you to get to the car, Indy cars only have one seat for the race car driver. Just enjoy the race. Danica needs all the support we can muster to help her finish the race on this one tank of gas. Hmm. You know, there may be a way for us to get into that car. Reading bug? No way! I already told you! Morin, reader, my magic book bag takes us to any time or place we can imagine, right? Why couldn't it take us inside Danica's car with her? 
That would be really risky, Reading Bug. But even if we did it, there's no room for us. Unless... Unless... Well, I'm a bug. I can fit no problem. And you, you can fit too, if you shrink to my size. Just like we did when we visited the bugs in the garden on our garden adventure. I don't know, Reading Bug. It sounds really dangerous. Come on, Lauren. We've got to do this. Danica needs our help, or she'll never win the race. I think we should go. We can tell her all about how the tortoise beats the hare. But, Reading Bug, if we don't land exactly right, we could get run over by a powerful race car and smushed flat. Yeah, but if we don't help Danica, she may never win and become the first and only woman to win an IndyCar race. Plus, it will be really, really cool to drive in a race car, won't it, Reader? I think we should do it. Magic book bag, don't be slow. We've really got to go, go, go. Carry us to Danica's side and prepare us for a speedy ride. Oh, my. Reader, look. The Reading Bug's book bag is growing bigger and bigger. She's really going to do this, isn't she? Reading Bug, I'm not sure we're ready for this dangerous trip. Are we, Reader? We've got the fire suits, the gloves, and the helmets. This is as ready as we'll ever be. So I'm going. If you're planning on joining me, let's all hop three times and into the book bag. Reader, do you think we should? One hop. It could be really dangerous. Two hops. But Danica might need our help and encouragement to win the race. Three hops. Okay, we'll do it, Reading Bug. Wait for us. And we're in! Whoa! Hold on, Reader! We're traveling really, really fast! And something else is happening, too. My whole body is tingling and my skin feels like it's getting tighter and tighter and tighter! We must be shrinking down to bug size just like the reading bug said. It's working! We're getting smaller and smaller. Small enough to fit inside the IndyCar cockpit with Danica. And look! We're heading right for Danica's car! Hold on. Here we go, go, go! What a ride! Do you think we made it? Here, Reading Bug, I brought you a helmet so you can talk to us. Put it on. Wow, you're as big as I am! Nope, you're as small as me. Quickly, let's get out of the bag. Follow me. Danica, what was that? You were slow on the restart and Helio and Carpenter just passed you. You're in seventh place now. Remember, we're trying to win this thing, not slip further behind. I know. Sorry about that. I was trying to save fuel like we agreed, but I was a little too conservative. I don't know if this is going to work. Come on, let's go. No time to delay. She needs our help. Follow me. Okay, reader. You first. Wow, look. We're inside the cockpit of Danica's race car. We're down below the opening that Danica looks out of near Danica's lap. I can see a steering wheel and lots of dials and lights behind it. And look up. There's Danica. Well, her helmet, anyway. I can't see her face behind the visor on the front of her helmet. Danica! Danica, down here! We've got to tell you... Whoa! What in the world? Oh, no! Hold on! The car is swerving! Whoa! Danica! Danica! Calm down and keep driving. We're here to help. I'm the reading bug, and this is Lauren and our reader friend. Just keep your eyes on the road and focus on winning. Danica, what was that? Try not to crash. We're getting close to the end of the race. Hey, Kyle, sorry. It's just that, uh, uh, oh, never mind. You'd never believe it. Keep your eyes and focus on the road, Danica. Just keep up with the pack, okay? That way you'll be able to make your move when the time's right. I know, I know. You've got this. Today's the day a female driver wins an IndyCar race. I'm sure of it. Just go, girl, go. I wish I believed it as much as you did, Kyle. That's exactly why we're here, Danica. You've got to believe, just like the tortoise. Tortoise? Yeah. Slow and steady wins the race. Well, I've got the slow part going for me today. Look, now I'm in eighth place. No, no, no. You've got to hang in there and wait for your chance. Going fast is fine, but at the end of the tortoise and the hare fable, the wise owl says something really important. He says, winners don't just brag about their lightning pace. They know it takes hard work to win a race. That's right. You and your crew have put a lot of hard work in, haven't you, Danica? 
A lot. I've been racing cars since I was 10 years old. That's right. I remember I read that in Becoming a Pro Auto Racer by Dean Miller. You started racing in go-karts, right? Go-karts? Yeah, a go-kart is a very small, one-person, open-wheel car with a motor. Go-karts come in all shapes and sizes, and people of all ages, including children, drive and race go-karts. There's even a World Karting Association that sponsors go-kart races all over the world. Children can race in go-karts? I didn't think that anyone could even get a driver's license until they were 16 years old. Way before kids get driver's license to drive on public streets, they can drive cars on racetracks. In order to drive on racetracks, the driver has to join a national organization like the United States Auto Club, as well as the local track. When I was 11, I started competing in World Karting Association events, and I won my first national points championship when I was 12. Then, when I was just 14, I started to race big, powerful, and extremely fast cars like this one. And I started racing in IndyCar in 2004 when I was 22. Like I said, I've been practicing a long, long time. Then I think it's time to win an IndyCar race today, don't you? Go, girl, go! shine use your heart in your head speed to the finish line it's time to take the lead and pick up speed break away from the pack till the end of the track go girl go go girl go go girl go go Pro, let it show, let the whole world know This girl can win it, your whole heart is in it There's no turning back, just follow the track Show you're a star, now race that car Go, girl, go! Go, girl, go! Go, girl, go! Go! This girl can win it, your whole heart is in it. Step on the gas, just finish the task. Shift into gear, I feel it, this is your year. Go, 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 go. of confidence I needed. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, reader. Thank you, reading bug. But, you know, my dad always told me, don't be the best girl, be the best driver. And that has always stuck with me. So today, I'm going to be the best driver on this track. It's time to fly. We're in ninth place now, but I'm ready to make my move. The moment you doubt whether you can fly, you cease to be able to fly forever. That's something that Peter Pan tells Wendy. And it's the moral of the tortoise and the hare, too. The tortoise never doubted that she had a chance to win the race. She kept on going, and when she saw the chance, she took it. Just like you're going to do, Danica. I just know it. Yeah, Danica, if you keep going, you'll find your chance. You've got eight cars in front of you. And just 17 laps until the finish line. Right. But right now, your one and only job is to figure out how to pass the car that is right there in front of you. The red car. Right. Number six. I've seen him before, and his car really slows down on the curve. He also likes to take the second curve of the track high. Why don't we see if we can pass him this time round? It's not going to be easy, because I'll need to pick up some speed without wasting too much fuel. But we'll give it a shot. I think I can take him. Ready? Reader? Lauren? Bud? You're going to want to hold on tight. I don't want anyone flying out of the cockpit. Reader? Reading bug? Hold on tight, just like Danica said. We're going to take this turn really, really fast. Go, go, 
go! Whoa! 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 Ha! Tap them! Great work, Danica. We're flying, literally. I think the car may have left the ground on that turn. Wow, we! But we made it, and that's what matters. Great job! You're in eighth place now, so it's time to focus on passing one more car. Yes! Number seven, another red car. I'm coming for you. Danica, keep it steady, not too much gas. You won't stand a chance if you need to pit again. You've got to finish the race on this tank. Great, great. Thanks, Kyle. Eleven more laps. Plenty of time. Eleven laps doesn't feel like plenty of time, Kyle. The race is almost over, and we're only in eighth place. Sure, but Danica's last pit was 40 laps ago. Most of the other racers pitted closer to 50 laps ago. That means that all of them will need to pit if they want to stay in the competition. And even if it's a splash and go, that'll be Danica's chance to beat them. Splash and go? That means a super fast pit stop for just a bit more fuel. Enough to finish the race with. Someone's got to blink any minute now and head into the pit for a stop. Ha! Danica, look! Hunter Ray in the number 17 car is heading in now! It's working, just like we thought it would! That means you're in seventh place now, Danica! How many more laps? Just eight more. How's the fuel, Danica? It's going to be tight, Kyle. Okay, don't push too hard. Save your fuel for a push at the very end and let the other drivers pit or sputter out. Someone is going to need to blink first. Trust me and trust yourself. Danica, you can do this. Hey, now Manning's coming into pit two. You're in six, Danica. Seven more laps to go. But Kyle, Dixon, Carpenter, Kanan, and Helio are still in front of me. And they've been leading the pack this entire race. Helio and Dixon have been trading off the lead spot. No one's been able to get near them. Even if I conserve fuel, it may be too late to catch them. What if I just speed up a little and try to get past one or two of them? Then you'll need more fuel and you'll be knocked out of the winner's circle for sure. You've been training for this your whole life. Stick to the plan, Danica. Danica, remember, winners know it takes hard work to win a race. You're just as good, maybe even better than any of those other drivers. You're strong, courageous, talented, and smart. And you can win if you go, girl, go. 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 This is your time. Let your confidence shine. Use your heart and your head. Speed to the finish line. It's time to take the lead. Away from the pack till the end of the track. Go, girl, go! 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 You're a pro, let it show, let the whole world know. This girl can win it. Your whole heart is in it. There's no turning back. Just follow the track. Show you're a star. Now race that car. Go, girl, go! 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 You're a pro let show let the whole world know this girl can win it your whole heart is in it step on the gas just finish the task shift into gear i feel it this is your year go 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 Uh, you're not going to believe this, but Carpenter is coming into pit. But he pitted at the same time I did. I know, but he clearly wasn't able to conserve fuel like you have. And now, oh, Dixon, he's coming in too. You're in fourth place. Yeah! Wow! But fourth isn't good enough. I'm here to win this race. Well, you're a whole lot closer. 
Because look who's heading into pit road now. Weldon and Kanan. Danica, do you know what this means? What? You're not in fourth place anymore. You're in second. Three more laps to go and just one more racer to beat. Danica, you got this. It's Helio Castroneves in front of us. That's another one of the racers who pitted at the same time you did, isn't it, Danica? That's right. He's playing the same game we are, trying to hold on to enough fuel to finish this race. Kyle, I can't believe this, but look. Helio is throttling back. Throttling back? What does that mean? It means he's slowing down. He must not think he can make it to the end of this race unless he pulls back and saves his fuel. Even though he's in first place, he can't go as fast as he wants. But Danica, doesn't that mean you can... Pass him? Yeah! Well then, what are you waiting for? Let's put the pedal to the metal and win this race. Oh no! What's that? It's the fuel. We're low. Danica, what's going on? Everything okay? The fuel is low, Kyle. Too low. I'm going to need to pit in order to finish this race. Maybe if it's a quick splash and go, I can still finish in the top ten. Maybe even top five. Better than sputtering out, though, right? I think my dreams of a win are over. Danica, it's your race and your call. But are you sure you can't finish without stopping for more gas? Helio is slowing down. You just need to pass him and keep running for two more laps. You deserve this win. And I think your years and years of hard work and training can get you past that checkered flag in first. The entire pit crew and I believe you can do it. So do we. Right, Reader? But if you're going to pull this off, You'll need to believe in yourself, too. Remember, the moment you doubt whether you can fly, you cease to be able to fly forever. You're right, Reading Bug. Hold on tight. Let's fly. Whoa! Go, girl, go! Helio, I'm coming for you. Danica, you passed him. You're in first place. <laughs> Just two laps to go and you'll win it. What's happening? I can't see. We're winning this race, that's what. A win after years and years of hard work for all the women racers who came before, and all those who will come after me. But what about the fuel? It'll take us over the finish line, I'm sure of it. I've been driving all kinds of cars for more than half my life. I know from the sound of the engine that we can make it. Now this is the way I love to race. Faster and faster, setting the pace. We're speeding so fast that no one can catch us, and no one can pass. You're right about that. Helio's eating my dust, and the white flag is waving. What does a white flag mean? It means one more lap to go, then into the history book. As the first woman to ever win an IndyCar race. I want to be remembered as a great race car driver with terrific accomplishments, and not just as a girl driver. Women have covered impressive distances, but they still face unexpected hurdles or extra scrutiny. Throughout it all, you have to remember to stay true to yourself and what you believe, and use those who discourage you as motivation to become better. Danica, I know that's how you'll be remembered long after you've retired from racing cars, and as an inspiration to girls and boys everywhere. Look up ahead, Danica. The checkered flag. It's waving. For you! Congratulations. You did it! Danica! You did it! You won the race! Amazing! And we got to ride the winning car across the finish line. Right, Reader? Danica, we're so proud of you. Go, girl, go! What an incredible race! Well, you could say I had some tiny voices in my ear giving me the confidence I needed today. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Danica Patrick has just won the 2008 Japan 300. Following less than six seconds behind her is Helio Castanevis. Third place goes to Scott Dixon, and Dan Weldon comes in fourth. Danica's win today is historic. She is the first woman in history to win an IndyCar race. Congratulations to Danica Patrick, her pit crew, and her sponsors. Lauren, Reader, Reading Bug, my pit crew is waiting to celebrate with me, but before I go, Thank you for all your encouragement. I don't know how or why you ended up riding along with me today, but I sure am glad you did. Why don't you stick around and join us for the celebration? You'll probably want to make yourself bigger, of course. Thank you so much, Danica. You helped me fulfill a dream today, too. Riding along with you was a wish come true. It sure was. And as much as we'd love to celebrate with you, we really do need to get home. We'll never forget racing with you today. Okay, then. 
I'm wishing you a safe and speedy trip home. Thank you. Uh-oh, here comes the crew. Go, Gorilla! Go! Go, Gorilla! Go! Go, Gorilla! Go! That's right! Go, girl, go! Great job, Danica! And now it's time for us to go, go, go as well. Isn't it, reader? Quickly, everyone into the book bag with me. One hop, two hops, three hops, and we're in! We've had a big adventure within our book bag, and I think we saved the day. We'll see you next time. Goodbye, book bag. Now it's time to fly away. Look, Danica, her pit crew, and her race car, and the racetrack, and all the cheering fans are disappearing as we race back home together at the end of this incredible adventure. It sure was incredible. I'll never forget the thrill of driving so fast, passing other drivers, and winning the race. Or of seeing Danica Patrick realize her dream of becoming the first woman to win an Indy car race. And that wasn't the only first for Danica in her career. I read in Becoming a Pro Auto Racer that after the 2008 Japan 300, Danica set a record for the best finish by women in the famous Indianapolis 500, coming in third in 2009. She competed in IndyCar racing for seven years, recording six top ten finishes. She also raced in NASCAR and became the first woman to win the pole position. The first position in the start of a NASCAR race that's given to the driver with the fastest qualifying time in the Dayton 500 in 2013. She spent five full seasons in NASCAR's top circuit before she retired from racing in 2018. In total, Danica retired having competed in more than 365 races with 14 top 10 finishes, 7 podium finishes, and 5 pole position wins. Because of incredible role models like Janet Guthrie and Danica Patrick, no one questions that women can compete against male race car drivers. What a privilege for us to get to meet her today. Thanks for the amazing adventure, Reading Bug. I'm going to draw a picture of us winning the race in Danica's race car when we get back. Great idea! I think I'll draw a picture of the pit crew quickly changing Danica's car tires and filling her tank with gas. What will you draw, reader? If you enjoyed today's adventure as much as I did and want to read more about Danica Patrick racing and race cars, you can read any of the books in my book bag. I have a complete list for you at readingbugadventures.com. We made it back home, and in record time, too. I guess a bit of that Danica Patrick speed must have rubbed off on us today. You did an amazing job, Reader, encouraging Danica all the way across the finish line. Thank you for all your help. When you're a reader, you're a leader. You're ready to learn about everything as you grow. You'll show this world that you can be anything. You could write a book or fly a plane. Build a house with a giant crane Whatever you do, one thing will be true There's nothing you can't do You can see it through Just by being you Cause you're a reader, you're a leader You're ready to learn about everything As you grow, you'll show this world that you can be anything You could sing your way into a Broadway show Don't let anyone tell you no Whatever you do, one thing will be true There's nothing you can't do You can make your dreams come true Just by being you What an adventure! Thanks for the help today, reader The Reading Bug and I can't wait to share more adventures with you soon Until then, though I'm afraid we have to say goodbye. That's right, but we'll play coloring music in just a few seconds for you to color to. I'd love to see what you draw today. If you can, please share it with me on social media or through thereadingbug.com. We'll see you again really soon. That's right, bye-bye. It's a reading bug adventure. There's lots of fun in store. Just inside our book bag, there's new places to explore. Grab your crayons and paper and your imaginations too. The reading bug and I can't wait to share our trip with you. Thank you for joining our adventure today. 
I'll begin playing coloring music in just a minute. And while you get ready to color some beautiful illustrations of all the things we saw and did on our adventure today, I have a few people to thank. Today's episode of Reading Bug Adventures is sponsored by Scholastic, the world's largest publisher and distributor of children's books, connecting educators and families through accessibility, engagement, and expertise. That's right. And today, we're featuring a new Scholastic title by New York Times bestselling author, Cody Keplinger, Lila and Hadley. It's a wonderful book, and we're thrilled to recommend it to all of our listeners. It sure is. I've been reading so many diverse books lately, but don't you think children's books need more representation for kids who might be different or going through difficult changes? I sure do, Reading Bug. And Lila and Hadley does such a great job. In the book, Hadley is very angry about a lot of things. Her mom is going to jail, so she has to move in with her older sister, and they haven't spoken in five years. She's also had to leave her friends and school behind, and she's going blind. And Lila is an abandoned dog who spends her days quietly lying around at the local rescue. She doesn't listen to directions, play with other dogs, or show any interest in people, until she meets Hadley. It's a wonderful story about discovering true friendship, finding home, and the possibilities of forgiveness. Lila and Hadley by New York Times bestselling author Cody Keplinger is recommended for ages 8 to 12. And you can get it at thereadingbug.com or your local independent bookstore. A big thank you to Scholastic for their support. And thanks to all of our individual sponsors as well. If you're interested in becoming a patron, please visit our page at patreon.com. Thank you for listening to Reading Bug Adventures. I'm Lauren Savage, and today's adventure was an original story written by Diane and Brandon Savage. This episode was performed by me, Chloe Savage, Brandon Savage, Caitlin Savage, and Rob DeCruz. New music by Ross Gruet and me, Lauren Savage. Thanks to Resonate Recordings, who mixes and masters all of our podcast episodes. The Reading Bug is our family-owned, independent children's bookstore in California, and we are passionate about educating, entertaining, and engaging children of all ages. Learn more about us at thereadingbug.com and our personalized subscription box service at readingbugbox.com. Thank you. Thank you.